Questions? Oh, oh wow. Oh, virtualization support. Virtualization support. Who asked this question? <laughs> what do you mean by this? You're talking about HANA. The, uh, um, there is a big answer to this and a little answer to this. Um, the little answer is yes. <laughs> the, the big answer is more complicated. Uh, the big answer says that uh, uh, everything that we are doing is about virtualization. When I talked about the disappearance of layers, uh, it is about virtualization in HANA we don't pre-build, we don't materialize views, we don't do cubes, uh, we do them on the fly. That is virtualization. So somehow the Paul Merits is a friend of mine, but you know, the hypervisor people have sort of hijacked the word virtualization, which is unfortunate, because the entire software endeavor is about virtualization. We are all about virtualization. All of us are doing things in virtualization. So it's, that is the higher level thing. Um, the promise of HANA is, like I said, the processor memory locality um, and exploitation of that to give a predictable response time on anything that you can ask. This is complicated in a virtual environment. In a now speaking virtually as in the VMware, Zen, you know, Hyper-V virtual notion. Um, why? Because a layer sits in between you and the raw control over the processor and the memory and things like that. So typically when you run HANA in a virtual environment, there is a performance degradation, uh, a non-trivial performance degradation. Um, for example, um, even if on an individual query, you might maybe see 10, 15, 20% degradation in performance depending on which virtual machine you run on. Um, as you run more users, it becomes worse. Sometimes you see pretty bad behavior when you go into like 50 concurrent users or something like that. In some cases, even at 20 concurrent users. So generally speaking, HANA doesn't do virtualization. And we are, maybe at some point the virtual technology, virtualization technology will get interesting enough that we can do that. However, um, there are cases where to already today, it makes sense to run in virtual environments. When the data sets are small, when you don't, when it is acceptable for you to take this 15, 20, whatever percent penalty. Um, when you're doing development and test, for example, uh, when your boss is too cheap to get you a real machine, um, <laughs> that kind of a thing. Uh, so in those cases, uh, you know, <laughs> virtualization is, is, is okay. We have been running on Amazon, obviously for development and test since May, and uh, um, more than, 1,000, one, my goodness, more than 1,000 Amazon instances have gone up since May with how many hours? 100 and 150,000 hours of development time. I want to know what these people are doing on the 150,000 hours uh, of developing on HANA. Um, and uh, therefore, and that is all in a virtual environment, you know. So clearly for those kinds of things, is okay. So that is the... Um, upscaling, scaling up. Yeah, well, when the virtualization technology becomes so much better that, uh, that we can do those things, then we have no problem with it, fundamentally. It is just that, you know, in life, uh, certain things are owned and some things we can rent. Uh, it is sort of like that. Um, I mean, batteries, right? There is power everywhere here in this room, but we still have things with, like even this, this thing has a battery inside it. Uh, it's not because of unavailability of electricity, but because some things are always local. You know. HANA plus ECC roadmap. Who asked this question? Again, the answer is yes. <laughs> um, we are, we are on track, you, you guys will get me into trouble now. We are on track to release 
uh, ECC running on top of HANA. We are making great progress. And at some point, all the lawyers will have approved and all the everybody involved in the complex machinery of a 65,000 employee company will say yes. You know, in a complex organization like SAP, it is possible for any one out of like 4,000 people to say no and then shoot the thing. But in order for you to say yes, all 4,000 have to say yes. So this is one interesting aspect of, uh, of a big company like SAP. So what I'm allowed to say is that ECC on HANA is making great progress. Actually, that man there, he is one of the people who happens to be responsible for this. So you can go ask him. Um, yeah, I, I should not speak any more than this, right? And it looks great. We were doing this thing. One thing that I will say, the MRP run, right? One of the most amazing examples is the MRP run. Uh, we are doing the MRP run, and uh, uh, we, we are doing this as a part of ERP on HANA. Um, and we totally refactored and rethought the MRP run. And my goodness, it is incredible. Um, today in ABAP, because in the current architecture of, of, um, of the business suite, we assume that we are agnostic to the database, and we have to be. Uh, this is how we have been for the last, whatever, 20 years. And, and um, we will be, continue to be for the foreseeable future and, and all that. But when you, in the case of HANA, drop that assumption, and you work to natively take advantage of, of the database, then we can significantly simplify the code and, and make it run better. Ha, ah, run better. <laughs> That's an SAP slogan, right? Run better. Uh, the, uh, no, I did not say that on purpose. I actually don't like it very much. Uh, the, uh, so the MRP run is 41,000 lines of ABAP code. And when we shrank this thing, it shrunk to about 2,200, 2,300 lines of, of SQL and SQL script and a little bit of ABAP in the application layer to preserve the non-disruption so that the outside um, callers don't see that anything changed. So in 2000, less than 2,500 lines of SQL, this is 120th the code. We ran it on the systems of 10 of our customers, and it runs anywhere from 60 times to 3,000 times faster. Um, so, so we are going to announce tomorrow just this MRP part as a separate accelerator so customers can move to this immediately. Uh, and uh, of course, you will get that also as a part of ERP on HANA. Uh, 